welcome to the Metal Voice today on the show. I think the first time officially on the show, Joey Belladonna. Joey. Oh, thank you. What's up, boys? Metal up, Hall of Famer. Going? Metal Hall of Famer, Joey know. Belladonna. I, and yeah. Kenny. Kenny, what's going on, buddy? How you doing? How's everybody doing? Hi, Joey. Hi, Jimmy. Hi, what's going on? Where are, you, where are you guys calling? Where are you guys at? I'm from Brewster, Joey. I saw you two weeks ago uh, with Behind Frontiers over at the Chance in Poughkeepsie. So that's in that area, right? You're... Yeah, I'm like 20 minutes down the road. Yeah. And how about yourself up here? I'm in Montreal, Canada. Oh, that's cool. Where, yeah, oh, yeah, nice. That's where you guys played at Heavy Montreal. We inducted you guys yeah. in the Metal Hall of Fame, yeah. Now, how do you guys, what's the, I'm, I'm interviewing you guys right now. How do you hook yeah. up with this together? Well, you know, do the metal voice over the years and uh, Kenny offered his services uh, many years ago and uh, he kind of takes care of the tri-state area, we'll say. And we uh, run around, I do, you know, yeah. do shout outs, run around, interviews. That's nice. So we've got North America. The, we're gonna bring the BF up there to the Montreal and Canada area. That would be good, right? You absolutely. should. You, absolutely. Yeah, Joey, I got to say, you looked really, really happy up there on the stage that night doing those songs. You were bat bashing out one hit after a journey hit after another. And you look you looked really comfortable for one and really happy up there. I got to say that. Well, you know, for the second show, it was, it's just starting yeah. to get the groove, you know. I mean, I didn't want to stop after we finished that third one. It was a really great night, too. Now that that's a good tight band you have there. Is that that Lee Greenwood's backup band normally? Is that the Nashville guys? Yeah, all all those guys played with Lee and still play with Lee. You know, uh, the bass player's been in and out doing his thing. Uh, he plays, you know, plays with a band called the Mummies, too. Uh, but uh, either way, yeah, great tight band. Those guys have they love doing it too. So it it helps when you got people that are really into it. No, you so could tell from the state, you guys looked like all, all of you guys were enjoying it. And like I said, there was never a, a quiet moment. And you went run right through a two and like two hours of a nonstop. Yeah, really you just bang stuff. them out, man. Just bang them out. Yeah. I know that, like that. Music, all about the music. None of this chitter chat. You know, it was a couple of toss and some stuff around, but not much, you know. But let, let's set this up here. So, Joe. I guess Anthrax is on a sort of small hiatus, right? We'll say because because uh, Charlie's sort of out with Pantera, so I guess everybody's doing their little thing. Is that it? Until yeah, Frankie put of... an EP out. Yep. You know what? To me, it's 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 just part of what I like to do. I don't. I uh, my me do you know Chris and I you know working together putting something together now. It's just a matter of time to, when you can get it right and to mm -hmm. do it. You know. Uh, I've always wanted to, and it just happens to be now, you know. Uh, it looks like, yeah, I'm trying to do something while everybody's doing stuff. It's, no, I I would just want to do it, keep doing it. So I don't plan to uh, just do it for the heck of it, you know, when I feel like it. We, we'll do it when we're – we have shows coming up, in fact, in March. So uh, okay. just taking them as they come, you know. But, Joe, you always did uh, – you did a, a classic rock cover band about Chief Bigway. Right, you used to take that out on the road in the tri-state area, like upstate, and yeah, yeah, we did, we did some stuff. You know, as much as I liked the event, I was like to take that. Um, it wasn't uh, anything I planned to to do, like on the road type of stuff. But I mean, if I had shot to take it out of town, we did. Now, obviously, I played drums in that band too, and we were a three power powerhouse, three piece. You know, nothing but just plain three piece. You know. I'd like to catch that one day. You still going to be doing that? I'm not sure. You know, I, I'm actually going to probably end up doing a lot of little solo stuff by myself. I have, I've been working on it like over the last couple of years, some recordings, a lot of songs. And I mean, like talking like deep, deep cuts, deep stuff, stuff I'll never be able to do in a band. I mean, I could do a whole night of Steely Dan or right, right. Odo cool. or Eagles. That uh, that night in the parking lot, you guys were talking about you might expand and do another j next. Uh, you might do j not journey next time. You might go out and do like Dio or something. Correct? Is that, that coming? That we'll we'll put together too. But obviously, right now, we you know you finally get this buttoned up to where it's like actually really ready to perform and and everybody feels comfortable and get some uh, shows under our belt. You know, we didn't want to. We only did two rehearsals before those those shows wow. so for in order for us to i mean I, I could sit here today and learn more do as i go 
but we're not ready to get into that just yet. But so, yeah. so, so the plan is you're going to go out and do journey, right? Do you have more dates coming up other than the few that are in Florida? Are yeah. More March, dates. Yeah. March, uh, March. So you have two in March in Florida. Are there more dates going to be popping up or are you just kind of oh, working yeah. on that? Yeah. I mean, uh, the, the book is open basically like any other band would do. They're, okay. they're processing um, and whatever comes up, you know, we're just, we're ready to take on, you know, cause I, I want it to grow. I want it to, to, you know, be a normal thing for everyone, you know, and even my guys uh, in this band, obviously too, they have, I'm talking to beyond frontiers. They have their own stuff that they do obviously too. So, but their, their goal is to do this. Okay. And do you have any set time frame for the, uh, your solo stuff coming? Is it the summer next year or the fall? Well, the, the solo stuff really is just me with my tracks and it's kind of an odd, it seemed like it's an odd thing, but man, I just cover up a lot. Of, I cover a lot of music and I just show up and I do my thing and I call the shots and I, you know, I could do four to six hours just nonstop. I mean, I'm going to call it my Joey Belladonna's jukebox. <laughs> is that what the name is? Seriously? Yeah, I was thinking about it, calling that's a good it. Name for that's it. pretty cool. I think, you know, it made me smile, so I think that's good. You know, it's yeah, a good. It's, uh, I mean, it is a. I mean, a, a flurry of just music. You would like get that out of here. You know, I mean, no, seriously. I mean, I, I could do a whole night in Chicago or something. I mean, it's just different for me. And then uh, doing it for two years, or even two and a half years, to know that I can actually pull it off and do it. Uh, without worrying about who's showing up, who's available. Uh, I'll probably, I'd probably be up in uh, Hampton beach in the summer. Maybe I'm planning on maybe doing something up there, like a four night kind of residency type of thing, you know, and, and doing a happy hour type of four to eight type stuff. I'm thinking of doing, you know, nice. you know, whatever. You, you, you don't shy away from sort of like the gra the grassroots clubs, right? You're yeah. you're open to anything, right? I mean, you would probably walk in there. You would think the jukebox was going on. <laughs> oh, I didn't know there was a dude up there doing it. It like, looks familiar. What was that? <laughs> yeah, it happened every time I've done it before. People were like, "Is the band going to start?" And like the bartender said to the one girl, she goes, "He's been that's been him for the last hour and a half." Yeah. Not even paying attention to thinking that I was that somebody was just spinning records and it was me singing to all this shit, you know. So it's cool, anyhow. Well, before Anthrax, when you were upstate, you were in like AOR type of rock bands, right? That, that's what you did. But before, even before Bible Black, you were doing that type of music, correct? Yeah, I mean, my my band in high school, God, we were doing, we were doing anything like. I mean, I'm not saying in order or any uh, exclusive many tunes of the type of bands that we were doing, but my high school dance consists of Montrose, Tubes, uh, Aerosmith, uh, God, a cheap trick, uh, whatever. I mean, I can't even think of the list that we had. We had, you know, Van Halen. We were doing all kinds of stuff back then. Rush, uh, you name it. I mean, we really had a lot of cool songs, UFO. You know, and it was just whatever we wanted to learn and play. We didn't, well, there was no rules for us. Obviously, some of the stuff I did back in the day, even before I joined Anthrax, you know, I had certain bands that we did such deep cuts that nobody would dance to, even though we were kicking hard and nobody could dance to it. So obviously, you learn that lesson. It's like, wait a minute, now, so maybe I should pick some stuff that yeah. get in these clubs and not just throw it, you know, everybody out the door, even though we're playing great, but nobody gave a shit. You know, that's, that's a David Lee Roth uh, motto. You know, if you can't dance to it, don't play it. That, that's kind of his philosophy. Yeah, I'm, I'm like, that. that's what's cool. If I do the, the solo stuff, I could give you something. You'd be like, oh, my God, that sounds like, that's a really good song. What the hell is that by? You're like, yeah, tons of that. We're like, you might never even have heard the tune before. I love doing stuff like I'll never play these songs with ever in a band in my lifetime. It's just not enough time, not enough people that would like, oh, no, I'm not playing that. Oh, I don't know anything about that. Oh, that sucks. You know, it's like there's that's the cool thing. But back in the day, yes, I did a lot of cover stuff and I and I like doing that. I mean, but we just like. It's your roots. It's your roots. Yeah, it's and obviously 
I mean, it's funny. I mean, sadly, Jeff Beck uh, passed away. And and all that kind of music was such a big influence on me. You know, UK and 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 Kansas and yes, and all the progressive stuff. I mean, I got a bunch of that stuff. I love doing that kind of thing too, you know. I, I, I love something with a melody, but a lot of good playing, a lot of good musicianship. Tell me about this. Um, before you mention you have recordings, when you sing recordings, you mean original material recordings or just recording cover song recordings? I have pe people that have recorded a bunch of stuff for me. And you know, I do a lot of I do all the vocals, the backups and stuff like that. I just it it's different versions of songs. Some of it sounds a lot like it. Most of it will sound a lot like it, you know, and then it's just, it's already, I'm, I'm singing to my playbacks, you know? No, no but I'm, I'm saying, is it original material? Are you getting no. at, or is it? No, it's all it's cover songs. Okay. It's all, all of it. Okay. Custom done. So. Okay. All right. Well, now, I just want to talk about Bible black for a second. How'd you get involved in that? I mean, Eric Adams was with them way before you were there. And then Jeff final was in there. And then, then you came in and did like two demos with them right before anthrax. That's what, uh, the, the ex elf guys, uh, Gruber and Driscoll, right? I, I, I can't even remember how I got the call. I took a bus from Syracuse to Ithaca. So remember, Duck picked me up at the airport. I mean, uh, at the bus station. Went to the house, and I ended up staying there. Um, but it was just, as Duck would say it, uh, it they just weren't ready to do anything. Uh, they were just kind of, kind of at their last kind of leg of even really wanting to do anything, even though the spirit was there. Uh, there were songs. Those, those the de the demos I did. God, I, I I wouldn't even know what we were doing when we did them. We went to this little, little teeny, teeny little place and just kind of winged it. I mean, I have tapes of ideas and stuff, the riffs that they had that we could have done. I mean, God, we, I mean, I learned all the other stuff that they had already recorded. I mean, I didn't even get the chance to jam one tune at any given place, even at the house. Gary'd have the kit. He'd come home from work and he'd bang and it was, you know, awesome. It was just great listening to him play, but nobody ever played in one room with that band. Wow. Uh, can't remember again where where I got the call to go down and meet with them. So that was, uh, but it was great because as I left there, Duck knew Carl Kennedy enough to say, "Hey, geez, there's this guy Joey was. I mean, you should give him a call." And of course, Anthrax was looking for somebody, so you know they asked me to come down and check them out too. You know, I mean, I always feel it's weird, like yeah. Uh, I, I read in the paper, this band Anthrax is looking for a singer. So I, I hopped in a plane and jetted down to Ithaca to beat up with these boys. I mean, I felt like, hey, they were sussing me out too, you know, even yeah. though I knew nothing about them, nothing about that music. And, you know, it worked out great. Uh, obviously, I was a little in, intimidated to join because I didn't know if the music was even really my style, but I saw it through it enough, you know. But I know the Bible Black, yeah, there was a great, great opportunity that never really got going. So your early days, you you audition. What was the audition like? What were you? Uh, what songs did they ask you to play? Covers or originals by Anthrax? Uh, you know, well, we just. I mean, I I got on. I mean, uh, everybody always hears the story about the journey thing. I, it was one of those things. You know, you get to the point like, all right, so uh, let's get the mic set up. Let's get in that room and let's uh, let, you know. I mean, if you want to warm up, you want to let, let's, you know, get the mic. Let's get some levels on your mic. I said, well, hell with it. I'm going to just bust out some shit. And I, bought, I, I cold caught just some journey stuff. You know, I think I might've did. I don't even remember. I think lights maybe, or, um, uh, Oh, Sherry, uh, little bits of pieces of stuff. I don't think I did whole tunes, tunes, but, and then at that point they're like, okay, now this isn't what, we expect it from what i gather you know because <laughs> you know the, the, I, I, I was uh, down in queens and we all heard rumors about what was going on down in the area about what was you know and we we heard they got a, a they replaced neil with a, a Theo steve perry type singer and it was he he was going to be the first guy in a thrash band that could like sing sing <laughs> that's the way to say it. <laughs> sing, it sing. like really <laughs> hit the notes and everything he changed everything but you know pre, uh, I mean, sing, prior, sing. 
I mean, right here, right. Uh, speaking of Sing Sing, you know, I think probably right out the box. I mean, I, I I thought that I kicked off Armed and Dangerous. You know, that was probably one of the first ones maybe that I tried, you know, to start out with because it was, you know, had a nice little beginning to it. And I, I mean, I actually have the demo of me singing it. It's pretty damn close to the record. You know, I it was just one of those things. You just there you there go. Is. There and it is. Start, start singing. And that, that was a lot of the stuff right out the box. And, and then at the very, very, very end, AIR was done together with everyone. So you kind of get a little bit of both of where we were all coming from. But um, yeah, we got, you got a little taste on that EP, but you killed it with that. With spreading the disease. You really came up and hit a home run with that. Yeah. Though, you know, what's good about that record? And I always people ask me what my favorites are. That one always hits me because at that point, nobody was really pushing me into a corner and like boxing me in and not let me do something. I just, I mean, give him a shot, let him do his thing. You know, and me, Carl and I, we would just like constantly try things. We had so much fun. You know, I was laying on harmonies and stuff and it, and it just really, really made for a cool record without even really even knowing anything about that band at all, you know, musically, especially when you hit the stage and you had to sort of do this material and the metal thrashing mad material from the fistful of metal. I mean, what was that? What was that? Neil was a great singer too. Like, right. He's another great singer. Right. So, I mean, there's, there's challenges singer. making nope. it your own, right. You got to make it your own. Yeah. You know, I, I, I did everything, but a couple of songs off that record. There's an instrumental. And I think we didn't do uh 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 subjugator. We didn't do uh across the river. Yes, I think, uh, if I remember correctly, I, I'm not looking at the titles, but uh, did a lot off that record. I had, you know, just it was just inevitable. And at that time, I, I'm not even sure really how many people really even knew that record at all or even spreading the disease so much. I mean, we played clubs that I had already previously played in cover band. I'm thinking, well, is this the where it's going to be? You know, yeah, yeah. those mixed decisions, you know, not that I was bailing out of my thoughts of being in the band it's just like you have to wait for the progress to happen um yeah I, I thought i could do much more than just what they did with this full of metal i mean there was a certain thing that i wanted to do more than that you know definitely yeah. with a lot more clarity and a lot more uh depth you know okay dynamics too you know I think, you know, obviously they can explain a lot more to, to where they went and how they were with Neil and all that stuff. I didn't know Neil and I don't I don't cast any kind of opinions on. It. I just know what I thought when I heard that. Of course, when I met them, they then sat me down and let me listen to all that. Mm -hmm. And I was like, OK, it's, I'm thinking, God, I can man, I could take this on. You know, we could do a lot more with this and sure. which spreading disease when you put them both together. There's a lot, a lot of both on there, you know? Yeah. Now, now, how open were they to you coming in writing? Was most of spreading the disease written already? Yeah. When I walked in that record, I mean, other than AIR was a brand new tune. Uh, yeah. Musically, there wasn't any uh, that I know of. Uh, I don't remember any recordings being done other than AIR, you know, from right, right from the drums, you know? Right. But I, you know, obviously I had to go in and start banging these tunes out, you know, make them, make them work for me and the and the music you know and the band obviously so would you they, they you take the melodies you write the melodies up and stuff i i every time i i look at it this way every time i go in and sing something i got to come up with everything you know, along with whatever input anyone has you know i don't i don't sit around and get coached every second and i don't especially like our i mean i can even jump to our last couple of records i mean you just go in and you get a guideline and you just take it on as a professional and you do enormous amount of things you come up with. I mean, I come up with ideas all the time throughout the process of even doing each song, you know, and one day between 12 and six o'clock, you got a whole tune that's just starting to whip up some, some smoke, you know, it's really coming together. Like by the time we go out for like, uh, like a dinnerish lunch, like I'm still like reeling from what I just did. I was, wow. Okay. Geez. I've never heard. <laughs> That's cool. cool and I, i'm digging it and now you i now i get my feet wet we'll come back and we'll start buttoning it up and even if i come back the next day whatever the band hears there's there's a lot that's been done that people dig 
So there's not a lot of changes, you know. Uh, you know, of course, everybody has input. Um, you can't really teach what I'm doing. Well, Graham Bonnet, you know, when I when I when I talked to him, he said, you know, Jimmy, I learned that melody is writing the song. I mean, people think lyrics and just the guitar parts, right? The riff, but mm-hmm. melody is just as important as any, you know, part of the composition, right? I mean, you so could talk to me. You could talk to me. I mean, if you wrote, I don't know, say, uh, "Carry on, wayward son," you said, "Carry on, wayward son." I took the be done, you know, like okay, go on and do something like that, whatever. You know, that's not a good example, but you know what I mean. No, it's a great example because if you sing it really well, it's yeah, a different a song altogether. Phrasing. I mean, our stuff, our stuff is so crazy because there's so much wording going on. Some words are even hard to pronounce on a, just a normal conversation. To try to get them in vowel, there's vowels involved. There's keys that are being the the their keys are written. There's nowhere to go. You know what? If you stop here, I'll hold a long note. Then you guys come in after this. And then I'll do this. And then you guys do that. We don't do that. We, everything is buttoned up. And it's yeah. cool. I mean, why change it, I guess, right? I don't know. But then again, I, I who know who knows what would happen? Like, I mean, even take Bible Black. If we went in the room, we started busting some songs out or anthrax to anybody. Holy cow, I didn't really think you could sing something like that over this. So I never thought of that. Wow, that's cool. You know, so there's all kinds of stuff that happen. And there's, you know, it's tough when people go, no, I wrote that or I had that, I did that. It's like, really, at the end of the day, if you get something decent, like, you know, like just like everybody just give a high five and let's move on. You know, I don't know. That's just, that's really well, I mean, uh, lyrics are important, but at the end of the oh, day, great. I mean, the lyrics are important, but the, if the melody's not there, it doesn't really matter what the lyrics are saying. Yeah, yeah. Right? You know, we could sing, I'll, we could talk about climbing the, the castle all day long, but if it's not everything to, to, to appeal your taste, and it gives, you lost me in the first couple lines, buddy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the, the melodies carries it. The melody carries I it. Listen to lyrics for a long, long time. When I used to do stuff, I mean, get the get the needle on there like it's a, a, a purple umbrella, like whatever the hell you know. Led Zeppelin. I mean, I never knew he said purple umbrella. I just <laughs> you know just did the melodies and everybody was cool with it. You know. <laughs> and even now I listen back. Oh wow, they, they said that and I'm like, oh, that's what it means. Okay, sure. I don't even Man, like Ma- Manfred Mann's always the perfect example for that, you know, like a God. douche, you know. <laughs> I love that. I mean, those are my favorite things, the way people phrase stuff. It doesn't sound like something. And it's just that's the trick of singing. You know, you you can't always get stuff out the way you think that some if somebody else said, like, yeah, do it that way. It's like, well, I can't, but I could try, I could try something else like this, sort of like that, and it works for me better. You know, people push, push, push. And it's like for a while there, there are a lot of those records. I mean, people push so much. It's like you just want to crawl onto the carpet or leave. You know, it's like uh, enough already, you know, give me a chance, you know. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I think you're the you know what happens? I guess Scott's sort of more in the spotlight. So you're like the unsung hero in, in, in Anthrax, at least in my opinion. It's sort of you give so much and you do so much, but maybe because you're not always in the spotlight in that sense or the forefront even though you are the lead singer but i'm you know i'm trying to get at i'm trying to get at that sometimes you're overlooked because of that oh i mean you know what it's so late in the game to even consider all that i i you know i totally understand what you're saying and i you know i'm just saying you're the unsung hero that's all i'm trying to tell you you know i appreciate that you know i a lot of times i just listen to everybody like yourself you both of you you have such good perspective on things and you Mm -hmm. know damn well how things go. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. It's, <laughs> and at the same time, I mean, I can't, I, I, I can't, uh, I'm in that situation and the way we roll, it's like you do what you can to up the ante for everyone. I mean, I, yeah. I think the team playing was much, much more appropriate than like, you know, I want to be the guy, you know, I, I never, never wanted to do that. I just wanted to be good enough to carry my weight and carry the band into a better place, you know? I mean, it must have been, like, like I saw you guys when you, you came back to the band, and it was, I think it was that you guys were opening for Priest. Another story, too. That was two. That, two. That, that, but, but I mean, uh, but in, there must have been a part of you that says, you see, guys, I was right all along, you know, kind of feeling, right? Nobody wants to hear that. <laughs> Father always used to say, no one wants to hear that they're wrong. Nobody likes to hear that. Very, well, very you know true, what? very true. Yeah. 
And it, yeah. you know, it's all, it's all in the memory. It's all in the bank. And, you know, obviously it'll never leave my heart. And I, and I continue to be as humble as possible. Yeah. To, yeah. Yeah. To move forward, which that's, what we all want to do. We want to move yeah, forward. Yeah. And then you, know, I think that, you handled it very well, Joey. I think you really do. It had to be tough, and then I, I, I don't know if it, how it would have been going back. You know, yeah. Some people are like, what? What, what are you nuts? It's like a marriage at that point, correct? I mean, it, yeah, you've been in relationships. I mean, it's kind of the same idea. I mean, you can either be on the same page, or you can be a little deviant and, and send it off course and expect a lot more from someone that you're not doing your part. You know, and what are the reasons? There's a lot to it too. There's sometimes there's just no reason for it. You know, and what do you get from it? And then you got to backtrack, and then you got to pick it up again, um, twice. You know, um, but hey, I just well, I guess I hit the back. Let your back. <laughs> yeah, I well, I I appreciate that too for everybody's sake, and I mean I I'm happy for the fans. You know. Uh, I just think people need to see it the way they, you know, the way it was, you know, there was nothing wrong with it in my eyes. I mean, I, I think everything we were doing, even to the last minute before I was gone, persistence, I mean, come on, that was pretty was great. Album. Great yeah, album. Some good stuff. And then it we was were... also the sign of the times, the times were changing. They really were. And everybody, everybody was, you know, trying something different at the, the early nineties. I mean, a lot of times, you know, there's stuff that's going to come right back around. And, and, it, and, and, and it did. <laughs> why, why, why? I mean, yeah, I mean, we could change as a band, which even our new stuff is, you know, I think is uh, adapting to some of the newer styles even without really deliberately doing anything. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. And that's a whole different opinion on everybody's part, I guess. But I feel it's uh, got a lot of both of everything, you know. But again, we're still original. We still have our own own style, our own sound. With definite, it's pretty definitive, you know. I think being humble is the best way to be, and uh, I think that I think at the end of the day, it's the fans that make all decisions, right? Sure. They and do. you are where you are today because the fans made that decision and no other decision, and uh, that's great, you know. Yeah, I would hope to think that uh, that sure helped you know, for everybody's sake, you know. Well, well, you did some stuff when uh, you weren't in Anthrax. You, you put out this one. I love this album. Hey, there it the is. The first Belladonna. <laughs> and then you came back a couple of years later, like 95 with uh, Spell of Fears. Look at this guy. That stuff is, I mean, I, I got I to gotta state this it. This is a great cover, Joey. You got to admit. Yeah, I mean, that's a cool, I have a backdrop to that. It's cool stuff. That that record really is all the demos. That uh, artifacts one and artifacts two, spells of fear is a complete demo. It's not even it's not even ready to. Uh, that shouldn't even have saw the light of day, or I should say demo, because right. that was like two weeks of just blasting out ideas. There is and, a difference. There is a definite difference between the two albums. Definitely, the, the first one is definitely worth it. You got a guy that comes in out of nowhere from LA and we just kind of hang out in the room, but da, 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 and it's a, okay, let's put it out. And, you know, obviously I look back and I say, you know, that should have never left the house. Not that I'm embarrassed at it. It just doesn't finish. Artifacts one and artifacts two is, is really the spawn to make that, that one record with different right. people, which is another a completely different story. I can go into great details of all that kind of stuff, but all that stuff, other than that one you held up, the bell down on that one, all of its demos to make that record. And unfortunately, um, you know, it wasn't on a label that really did anything. Um, but, was that mausoleum the first one? Or? You know, hey, we found somebody that really wanted it. That, that's a tough road to be on just in itself to try to get a deal back then. You know, I was all by myself. I mean, try that, try that yourself. You know, none of the guys really went off on their own that much like I did, you know, after a long period of time. Um, but I'm proud of the demo stuff. Paulie Crook and I, uh, we, 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 we rocked every day. We wrote a right. song. Paul Cook's on that stuff. You're right. Yeah, the demos that, that, I mean, we really, that lineup, you know, obviously that all fell apart and everybody went their ways and that kind of thing. No bad bloods and all that kind of stuff. Just people were just moving out. We were just sitting every day writing and then everybody moved. We could, we probably could have done the record together. Uh, at least the drummer, Jeff and me and Paul, Paulie and I, but 
at that time the label had something i had some guys i had a band we were going to play and and all that you know his history but yeah i'm glad to have some stuff out but I, i'm clear that those are a demo. those are all when, when, i mean oh. those artifacts one and two are an eight track cassette yeah they were they were written and recorded wow. at the day we would go have dinner and go back and start another one we were just banging them out and it was a blast i, I don't think i've ever had so much fun writing music like that Paul and I, we would just constantly sit around and just bang songs out and record them three microphones on the drums we had foam on the cymbals i sang on a 58 you know <laughs> A 57, I'm sorry. You know, and we just raw, balls out, eight track cassette, you know. <laughs> Old school. Yeah. When, when, when Anthrax started moving into, okay, your first album, second album, then you're going uh, amongst the living, right? Then you start touching into the rap business. Were you sort of a little put off oh, by that? Yeah. Or what was your opinion on I'm the man and bring the noise? Oh, look, yeah. I love those songs. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. No clue what was going on. I remember walking in the room. There was kind of a, a heated moment about certain things about that. I'm like, and when I heard them working on it, I thought I walked in the wrong room. <laughs> I, I honestly did. I had no idea what was going on. I mean, obviously, these things move and they go and they they do whatever they need to do. And I'm I'm happy to be a part of all of it. I I had the experience has been great. Uh, I love playing drums on some of the stuff. And I love jamming with Public Enemy. I love listening to their stories about how they come together and play. It's it's super cool. And uh, that you can't you can't deny the the fans having so much fun with that stuff. But I have no idea. I mean, I even did a rap thing with this band UTFO, if I'm correct. I got called up to do something. I mean, be on their record. I mean, I don't even know who they are. And I remember doing some, but I don't know much about rap. I couldn't be, I mean, I'm the furthest thing from it. Right, right, right. When you're in that video, did you really feel out of place? When Which you're, one? The, pub, the public <laughs> enemy video. Bring the noise. Bring, bring the noise. Bring the noise. Give me, something, give me something I can, you know, I'm not going to stand around and That's pass, it. That's it. You know, uh, drinks while everybody's shooting a video. I could give me some turntables. I'll get that, you know. It works you, you should have played drums. You should have played the drums. <laughs> let, uh, let Charlie sing. You know, honestly, I probably should. But it, although <laughs> it's funny, I, my favorite one of my favorite stories is that Flav. That's the only instrument that was there all day. So Flav, of course, you know, in the middle of a basketball court, <laughs> all day, all just jamming away on by himself. It was the best. I mean, yeah. then he got on a megaphone and got everybody riled up and it was fun. It was a fun video, but there really wasn't much for me to do. But what I did was, I think, you know, fits fits the mold of where I'm at. <laughs> you know, it's funny, Joey, because I remember when that video first went on. I go, oh, it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. And then I go, where's Joey? And then, you know, he's on the turn. Why isn't he singing or rapping? I was just I was just like, what's going well, on here? I out a few things, you know. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but I but I get it I get it like I'm not trying to diss it because I no, liked it I, I, I'm just I, saying I, like it was I, out of place. Up, man. You're over you're over here. You you good? Okay. All right. Yeah, but by doing that stuff, you definitely separated yourself from the other thrash bands, the other big the big four oh, yeah. and everything. You it's definitely did. Right? I mean, it is Chuck. Chuck. Every time I see Chuck when he comes to join us, he is so psyched to do it. We're so psyched to see him show up. It's like he's here, man. But you know, it's it's great. I actually bumped into Flavor Flav in Times Square when I was leaving my building one time, and I had an Anthrax shirt on, and that he stopped dead in his tracks and was like, "Yeah, boy." He was. He was like, <laughs> Did he have a clock on him? Was he walking around with a clock? No. <laughs> He was doing his VH1 stuff, and he was down the block at the, and he was just walking past us, and he saw me coming out of the building, and he stopped and he t acknowledged the shirt. It was really cool. He gave me so many better, better one-liners. One time he comes to me, he goes, "You man, you motherfucker, been blessed." <laughs> I'm like, "Cool, thank you, man." <laughs> it's just, it's just too funny. When when you sort of when Persistence of Time came out, the album did good, and suddenly you're out. Did you ever stop and say, you know what? Maybe this is not for me, the music business. Maybe I'm just going to be a milkman or something. Or 
you know what? I'm going to keep doing this in another. I when I before I met those guys, like I said, I was constantly. Pre- I mean, my my parents, my father. You know, obviously, God rest his soul. But the thing is, he had a speaker and an old TV and put one in. So when we practiced in the basement, fucking loud as hell, he would crank the TV up, and I, you know, I have to yell at him, say, "Dad, we're done." You know, because you never know who's stop and start, stop and start. But always used to play, did dances, played clubs, rehearsed, always practicing, never stopped. Before I even joined Anthrax, I was constantly doing it, and I was destined to keep doing it. If I wasn't in Anthrax, I'd be doing something. I would find you'd find me somewhere at a club down in Albany or wherever it is doing something. So no, I would. When I left Anthrax, it was just a lot of. Uh, a lot less of things that I was doing, you know, obviously we were on the go all the time. So yeah. coming yeah. back then you had to regroup. Yeah, it was a lot. It was a lot that, you know, it was, you might as well be just set off the side of the road and try to look around and go like, where do I go? What do I do? You know? So you got to think for a minute. I had, I had to take a little bit of time to deflate, you know? So. A, lot of, a lot of people are like that, not only in the music industry, they work in a big corporate, you know, in a, in a big job for like 20, 30 years. Suddenly they're, you know, they're let go and they don't know what to do with themselves. And they have to sort of, like you said, rethink their, what they want to do. And uh, hey, finding finding people was some of the hardest parts, you know, as you go. And as of even today, finding like uh, finding the Beyond Frontiers guys it takes time to find people you can and even then they're still like okay this guy doesn't want to do this today and that guy wants to get up and this time and he doesn't want to play them you know there's so much to deal with but i want to play so i always try and try to find someone give somebody a shot to do something to play in a band together it's really a hard hard process you know but it never left my mind i always willing to find that place you know all right uh, How did what, you find those guys in Nashville? It's kind of the keyboard player Doug. Uh, we uh, we're on uh, Ship Rock together, and uh, oh. they wanted to do this Journey Unplugged thing, and he was a keyboard player. And I was like, dude, I go, what do you think? And you want to, you want, you know, let's can we do this before we leave? Can we put something together? You can learn. Hey, I'll give you some songs. We'll learn them. We'll go on the boat. Sure enough. We put the thing together and, you know, we had another gentleman, Tyson, which is awesome, too. He joined us on the keyboards, too. That was like last minute. I'm like, sure. Yeah, whatever. If you think, you know, you know how to play, you play some solos or whatever, sing some backups. But Doug, the keyboard player that's in Beyond Frontiers, I asked him, I go, after that was all done, we did this unplugged thing, which was awesome. I said, hey, do you think you could, you know, I'd love to do a journey thing. Do you think you could, you know, want to do something like that? He goes, I can, I could definitely put a band together for you. I got the guys. Mm. And here we are, you know, obviously we sat dormant for a little while for COVID, you know, there was no really no reason for us to push our way out the door for, you know, we did something just before COVID, but we had, I didn't even met the guys, except for the keyboard player. We never rehearsed. So oh, that wow. was, it was throw and goes, which, you know, we opt not to do that again, but we still had fun and we did a pretty damn good job for never even play, playing together or even seeing each other. So it's pretty awesome. But at the same time, we rehearsed this time and here we are, but uh, it's the same guys, you know, uh, and they're, they're really good dudes, man. They, uh, they, you know, Joey, have you ever, I mean, a vocalist of your caliber, have you ever had an audition? Want to say something. What did you want? Yeah, to say? come on. Oh, what I you, want to say? you know what? Um, obviously uh, I always say, you know, we, we've both been together on this and she does a, a, a shitload of work. And, you know, a lot of times you get wrapped up in the whole band thing, but that's, that's part of it. You know, I always, I always, you know, I want to just say that she does a lot more than I do. Bring her on. Now, bring her on for a minute. Bring her on. No, no, no. I always just bring her on. But you know what? I, bring her on. This is the All guy. Right. How you know? doing? Oh, no, no, no. You know what? Bring her on. But wait, where's she going? Go back. <laughs> No, I just there's the brains you're saying. Is that what you're saying? You're saying here's the brains behind the operation. A combo of things you just need to take care of and stuff. Always, he's always dreamed of doing this. All right. So what's what's it like managing Joey Belladonna? Oh, it's a dream. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Well, and I, I have to say because we both feel the same way that how lucky we are to be able to bring joy to other people. Okay. And 
you know, not every person you meet, especially every man is like that. Oh. Joey just wants to make people happy and the fans happy. And even when we're, we're at the airport or we're in a restaurant, it doesn't matter. Come over, say hi, get an autograph, take a picture. And to be able to work with somebody like that is, I don't know. How long have you been together? How long have you been together? Since 89. He asked me to marry him in um, January 20th, 1989. And did you know he was the singer of Anthrax back then or you did? Uh, yeah, but we dated uh, like. She didn't Hank Williams, so she was a little scared. <laughs> but was, you get these stories. You get sometimes these stories of, you know, people who are, you know, famous and other a lot more they too. didn't even know who they were famous when they met. You know? Yeah, yeah. well, he, um, we dated over the phone pretty much. Oh yeah, back then, back, right? Back in the day, we didn't, you know, no, no cell phones, no zooms or anything like that. So uh, I, I knew he was the one when, you know, when you're speaking with someone and there is a silence and you feel you have to fill that silence. He wasn't like that at all. I felt totally comfortable in the silence with him. Yeah, it's just nice to have someone that's into the music, into to helping out versus like taking me out of my game. You know, Pete. Some some guys get taken out over a relationship, you know, because, you know, you're not enough of me time, yeah. you know, you got to do all that too. But at the same time, I'm glad that she's into helping and helping put it all together basically. And, you know, it's kind of our thing together, you know? So how did you meet? You didn't, you didn't just elaborate on that a little bit. How did we meet? Do you remember? How I... <laughs> you <know>. oh, well, <laughs> um, I remember being backstage at Monsters Rock and I worked for Hawaiian Tropic and, uh, I remember being chased down by somebody in a golf cart. Yeah. <laughs> Less than somebody else. I, I, <laughs> I hope it was Joey. <laughs> and so we went down to Monsters of Rock, which, you know, obviously a pretty big event back then. They only, the, the Monsters of Rock. Yeah. We actually ran into each other at a Journey concert, too. Yeah. So hey, it, look at that. It was like almost fate. It was like we just kept running into each other when we didn't even, we lived how many states away so i think we just we kept running into each other i was like okay this is just so mentioned. this is 89 is when you met or you got married got engaged well we met casually in 86 but we you know didn't even there's a picture of us he's standing behind me didn't even really realize it and uh mm. so but the first time we really connected was at monsters of rock yeah i mean because you, you see someone you don't really you know I don't know. Joey, 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 was she the one who sort of kept you going and motivated, you know, as sort of the lean years after persistence of time, you know, when you try to oh, really focus? Without a doubt. I mean, that that's that's the bond that we have that kept us for 13 years, being able to get through all that stuff. And it's always a challenge, you know, to get through it even now. You know, there's always every day, every day is, a, you know, you have to be focused and, and learn how to to cope without taking things too far you know it's but a lot of um there is sadly there's still a lot of misogyny left in the entertainment business and, well yeah 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 as i'm yeah and uh yeah, it's hard hard for women you know mm -hmm. yeah yeah but it's getting better it's getting it, a lot better it's getting a lot better um between the time when Belladonna toured for Motorhead, I can't remember the year, and I can't remember the year, but I, I tour managed Belladonna. Yeah, that was another tour. And uh, the difference between what I had to go through back then versus what I go through now is is 180. It's so much better. It's unbelievable. And there's a lot more women. Like this last tour we did with Beyond Frontiers, I dealt with a lot of women at the venues. That's we good. That's good. Talk about the nice, some of the oh, nicest the, people. Oh my goodness, we had the best people on this. So thing. you're like a foremother, you know, like other women will see you now and say, you know what, I can do it too, because she can do it, right? That's that's kind of yeah. like, you know, how it is. Yeah, why not? Yeah. I mean, there's really no cut and dry situation. Some people had to learn just like anyone else mm -hmm. how to do it. There's really does no. He, does, does he do the dishes? Yes. Oh, yeah. Oh, look, at, there you go. That's all you need, really. Does he cook? Does yeah, he cook, a lot though? more than I do, so that's the word. I do all kinds of stuff, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, we, yeah. So that's why she's keeping on. Keeping there's on. that certain thing, too, <laughs> that they intertwine of, like, you know, go get me breakfast every morning. Well, we have our different things yeah. that we do. Do you, you get her breakfast or she gets you breakfast? Yeah, all all in the morning. See, I, I managed at Williams-Sonoma for a long time, so I used to cook professionally, I guess you would. Mm. And during that time, uh, when you work 
for it. As a living, you kind of don't like to do it at home. You it falls out of favor a little bit. Yeah, yeah. He picked it up, and he's hey. still. I know it's such a cool <laughs> thing because you can't really plan for that. It's like, okay, what you're gonna do is this, and I'll do that. <laughs> It's like, uh, no, it's whatever, no. whatever works, you know, yep. and you got to be thankful for that. A lot, a lot of um, just working together, compromise. And, you know, I it just, we stick up for each other, you know. Um, yeah, that's hard too. There's a lot of, a lot of, a lot of defending going on and yeah. it's, uh, it's challenging, you know, it's hard. Sometimes you just want to mediate things and kind of miss it sometimes, you know. But, Kenny, do you do the dishes at your house? I tried to do dinner the other night, but I almost flooded the kitchen out with the spaghetti <laughs> overflowing. So. And I even got a dishwasher, and I don't think I've used it in about at least fifteen years. I've I've never. I mean, I don't have enough dishes to really yeah. throw in there, but yeah, yeah I don't mind. I, that's that's a given. Oh, this I don't is a very touching stuff, moment. I like this stuff's in the in in the cabinets before before I go to sleep. It's all mm -hmm. put away. Yeah. And vacuuming? What's what's up the story? <laughs> Who does the vacuum? Look at this cleaning. guy. Look at this guy. He's yeah. the singer. Look at that. He's the talent. He's the he cooks. Yeah. And he cleans. Look at does that. You, oh, do you do like, windows, Joe? Huh? He, do you do windows? He does do windows. I've done windows. So Joey, I'm yeah. procrastinated about the windows. There's too many of them to clean. You know, there's there's That's nothing all. that that each of us won't do. You know, we'll we'll both do everything. I'll work on the cars, I'll change the oil. Yeah. You, you do a lot like, of stuff. Yeah, so I know this interview turned. I'm sorry. No, 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 I, no. I like. I actually prefer this. I prefer this, prefer this interview. <laughs> there's obviously there's you know we could talk about the same thing. Record, joining the band, out of the band, but but, but there's so much more to it, right? I mean, I know some people are like, wow, that's cool. I didn't know that. So at the same time, so so you've managed Joey now for 13 years. If that is that, that's what I'm hearing, right? 13 years really consider we, can sit, we, we work together it, yeah oh, okay. we, i mean people think hey she out with you and she's got to like guide you down the stairs and make sure your shirt's buttoned. no we're just constantly helping each other i mean we just we do things together that's all i don't know all um, right well you know bring uh belladonna and your you know beyond frontiers to canada you know oh yeah. for sure i know it'd be nice to come up there i know we're hitting there with anthrax this time around um we got what the the west coast side. Yeah, the west coast yeah, you got to come to montreal though you got to come to montreal we, that's we were just there basically we were up in the middle of nowhere did you happen to show up for that show you know what the problem with that was and i'm just being blunt here uh it was a great gig but it's an hour and a half from montreal yeah, i heard a lot that's of the problem about it yeah. sometimes you just get a bid and you go out beautiful place i mean it, it just, is it is it is it's just and it was on a weekday from what i remember and that's the problem if it was on the weekend you could, it's easier to like make that journey right yeah we'll go I mean, obviously we're going to find our way back in canada at either place yeah, fans. i would do a whole canadian run I yeah mean, that would be fun too because i mean motorhead we did a quite a bit of stuff you know mm -hmm. the kingston ontario what kingston uh, you know joey i think i remember when you came to Montreal, you played for Foon Electric, if you remember this, and there was... Was it Motorhead? No, it wasn't Motorhead. It was a small club. The mid-90s, Jimmy. I think, yeah, I think I think you lost the drummer that night. Yeah, and yeah. you yeah. ended up playing the drums. That's right. I remember the club, and I remember the drum set and everything. Wasn't that the place where Anthrax played? I think it was that place. When, oh, it no, could it be. Club. It was a club. I know what you're talking about. It's like about. a 300-seater. It's yeah, like it a... Downtown. It was kind of a downtown area. It's a grungy... It's called Fufun. It, it's like a grungy sort of... Uh, yeah, club it, was, and, it was a good gig. I remember it was a lot. Uh, people were definitely ecstatic, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah I remember yeah. I had a cool kit. I was like, I was, I was on. For that. Actually, here's here's my last question. All right, bye. So my last question is: yeah. Have you ever had an audition throughout all your years? Like, you know, Iron Maiden calls you up, or wow. Judas Priest calls you up. But was there any that big audition when you said, "Look, guys, I'm in a band. I'd love to do it, but I can't because I'm, you know." Hey, did I get any calls? Yeah, it? yeah. You know, I got a, I got a few that I don't even want to mention. There was stuff that just wasn't my, my style. Uh, nothing, nothing that I wish that I would have taken. Uh, okay. There was an individual in a band, a big, huge band that had a solo thing. Did you know? I won't even, I didn't want to mention the name either. But it just at the time I was working on this, my solo stuff. I wasn't sure that I wanted to go overseas. You know, it was just one of those things, but nothing really in particular that I that I I wish that I would have been able to do or came my way. You know, 
And obviously all that stuff is, I mean, being in Anthrax, I think I probably scared half those bands away anyhow. Yeah, he's just oh. a thrasher. You know, I, I one thing about Anthrax probably put me in a little bit of a, you know, a, a situation where musically, vocally, maybe I wasn't, I'm not like, oh my God, I didn't know you could sing Ambrosia stuff and, you know, Eagles. Oh, and do it. Wow, you can do that too? Or you can sing, you could, wow. You know what I mean? So I think I probably missed a lot of that, a lot of that stuff, unfortunately. Um, but that's okay, you know, because I worked out. I'm going to do more of it now. Yeah, yeah. Kenny, do you have a last question? I have one you last want to ask? question. Yeah, yeah go okay. Ahead. Sorry. You, I noticed you've been hitting the national anthem circuit in the NFL. You did Seahawks <laughs> and you did Buffalo. Now you're an upstate New York guy, but I see this appears. It's a Joey Belladonna Minnesota Viking ultimate fan card. Uh, are you not a Buffalo Bills fan coming from upstate? I like the Bills, sure, I like the Bills. Yeah, but you're a Viking fan. I, I, I look at I, you know, I can't, I can't, I can't hide a team that I've had since I was a kid. You know, Brad okay. Talkington days. You're going back. Yo, Cap, man. I mean, I, I watched the Vikings on TV in the snow, and the purple, the helmets. I loved all of it. And me, you know, one of my friends back at home, we used to had Viking helmets and the other guys too had Ram helmets. We'd go and play against each other. We always, you know, I mean, come on. I, I love, I love, I mean, I'm a fan. I never really diverted, but I also like some of the upstate teams, you know, I have to, I have to root for them when it's time. Well, you just did Buffalo a couple of weeks ago. My wife's cousins are up in uh families up in Canada and they come down to Buffalo for the games. And uh, one of the kids were at the game. And I remember my uh, cousin Joey texted me. He said, your boy's singing the anthem. <laughs> yeah, right. It, it, it was so, right around the time we were talking. Yeah. It snowed like pretty crazy at that game. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the seats were just packed with snow because it snowed that day. They had cleaned Jeez. everything. Else. But it was a really good game. And uh, uh, it was a, it's always a lot of fun. That was my second, third, fourth, five, fourth time I've done Buffalo now. Oh, oh, were wow. you born in Minnesota? Huh? Were, you born, were you born in Minnesota? No, 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 just upstate. Upstate. upstate okay. Okay. Oswego, 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 right? Yeah. Yeah, right, right across the lake from Toronto, you know? <laughs> My son's in Minnesota. He lives there now. Oh, yeah. I mean, I don't, people like He's a Viking oh. fan, yeah. That's cool. I they're at home this week, which is, uh, can't wait, you know, it's exciting. You know, two games, two games to go before you get in the, to the dance. Again. All right, on on that note, thank you so much, both of you. It's very nice to see both of you. It's nice to see a couple it. working together well, and being successful. I'll see you guys again on the 31st in Wellmont Theater. In oh, yeah. Jersey. I'll be at the Jersey show. I'll see you there. We've been there before? Anthrax? Uh, I don't think Anthrax has been at the Wellmont Theater. It's a beautiful theater. Oh, new? I, new, I, 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 something new? Yeah. No, nah, it it's been around a while. It's like a, a Nazi theater in Montclair, New Jersey. It's a great theater. I saw Symphony X there this summer. Great, great show. I got a feeling we might have played there. You're going to like it. I, I think we might have played there if it's a theater. Is it like right in the city? Like there's some nice shops across the street? Yes, it's a little village, like a little, nice little yeah. town. I think, I, think we've, I think we've played there a couple of times. I think we did with Kill Switch the last time we were there. Oh, that's right. You might have. You, you probably yeah, did. Yeah. Yeah, because this is not, obviously not brand new, and by now we, yeah, I'm almost sure. Yeah, it's a cool place, good place. Yeah, I'll see you there. You're gonna be right. there, and we expect you to come to Canada, at least the eastern part, not the western part, the eastern. Put in a good word, we'll bring the BF up there quick. <laughs> All right, All right. You, you bet, you bet. All right, guys. Good luck with we'll Frontier, day. Joey. Be good. It's a lot. Uh, good seeing you both. I hope you enjoyed it, and uh, thanks for asking us. Yeah.